Hey, my name's Ty. I'm here to do a review and kind of overview video of these two different plows. They're very similar units from two different manufacturers. This is the DK2 plow, and this is a Snow Bear plow. Um, this particular DK2 is 84 inches wide, 22 tall. The Snow Bear is 82 wide and 19 tall, but the size really makes no difference to my review. Uh, if this one had been larger and this one had been smaller, they've been the same. Uh, it's all kind of the same because the way that they work and the way that they can fail uh, it's pretty much the same regardless of the size. So I'm doing this review. I don't have a channel or anything that I'm trying to grow. I just want to do this review because I feel like I sort of owe it to the internet uh, to do this because I've used both of them. Most people, they do a review. They get one unit, not both major competitors' uh, units. They put it together. They show you unboxing it, put it together. They show you using it the first, the first time, and they say, oh, boy, isn't this the bee's knees, and thanks very much to whoever for sending me the plow. That's not what this is. I bought both these with my own money. I've used both of them for one or more seasons. Um, specifically, I used the Snow Bear first. I uh, used it for four seasons. And then I got the DK2. I've used it for one full season um, so far. And I've tested both of them uh, essentially to failure. Um, having said that, it sounds like the DK2 is not as good because it lasted me one season instead of four. I would, uh, I would hold off on that conclusion just for the moment and let, let, let me show you some of the different features and different ways that they failed because I'll give you the spoiler, unlike other reviewers, I'll just tell you right off the bat, uh, the, 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 the conclusion of this review is I don't know which one of these is better. Uh, I'd rather show you the different ways that they failed and different ways that they work uh, so you can kind of get an idea what would work best for your application. So just for context, uh, I plow between a mile and two miles of road it's dirt road. Uh, I do a few driveways as well um, on that road. Uh, but what, I, what I'm not doing is plowing 200 feet of paved flat level driveway or, or, or nicely manicured, you know, short dirt driveway or something like that. I'm actually using these to plow roads, um, which is clearly above and beyond what they were probably intended for. Uh, but just so you know, that's kind of the application. And, and here in Western Montana, I will plow I should have kept track of this, but between one and two dozen times uh, per season. So this one probably has, you know, 40, 50 uh, plowing occasions on it. This one probably has between a dozen and two dozen, uh, something like that. So that, that's kind of how they've been used. First, let's just kind of overview the features of these two plows. So I'm going to show you the DK2 because that's, uh, it's a little easier to see with it on the truck. Um, and basically the way I have these both hitch mounted, we're going to talk about hitch mounting later in the video. Um, but if you don't have the hitch mount, uh, I think it's right here that they have some custom mounting bracket for certain trucks. Now I'm using the, I'm using the funky old Jeep Comanche. And so I didn't have that option. I needed to do a hitch mount plow, which is why, why I wound up with both of these. Uh, the way that these work basically is you have some kind of lifter. This one is the hydraulic lifter, the snow bear uses a strap lifter. We're gonna talk about the issues with the, the different lifters, uh, or actuators, they call them. It pivots, they both pivot on these pins down here when you lift them and set them down, and then they pivot left and right on this bolt and around this track, so you get your, in the case of the DK2, you get three positions. On the snow bear, they give you five, but the intermediate positions are kind of a waste of time. They do have trip springs. Here are the trip springs, um, and they have shoes, and in the case of the DK2, it has wheels. I can't remember if the Snow Bear, I think the Snow Bear came with some like little feet, but so you can move it around when it's off the truck. The Snow Bear is basically the same animal. So this, uh, you know, it's a little bit hard to see what's going on here, but here's that, here's that uh, swinging uh, adjustment, left, right adjustment back here. Um, here's the same kind of bolt that it, uh, that it pivots on. Um, all basically the same kind of construction, the, 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 uh, the little, ribs back here are the same concept. Um, they are not identical, they, but they're conceptually basically the same thing. Now with the DK2, I initially thought it looked like it was built a little better um, and it was gonna survive longer because of that. I am not sure that that panned out, <laughs> but uh, I'll show you in a minute has some ways that it failed. Okay, so we'll talk about hitch mounting these really quick because if you're getting these plows, I think it's likely it's because they have these hitch mount capabilities and there may be one or two other manufacturers. These appear to be kind of the most ubiquitous ones. Um, and I'll give you a couple of tips about how to do the 
the hitch mounting that's going to make these plows perform a little bit better, but it's funky. Like however you do it, it's going to be a little funky. The biggest issue is how far out in front of the truck it sits. You can see it's, it's way out there, which means going around corners, it's way on the outside of the corner, no matter what you do. Um, it also puts a lot of strain, a lot of weight on the mount. And you can see my mount is not level anymore. Um, I did some reinforcing of the hitch mount itself, but it's still obviously, uh, it didn't stay quite level. Uh, now you can also see that I have a drop unit on there. And that seems weird because look how low this thing is off the ground. Oh, you can't see the scale, but it's like, it's like six inches off the ground. And uh, it's worse when you pick it up. It's like, it's like three inches off the ground once the suspension is compressed. And the problem then is if you're driving around, you hit a bump, it's gonna touch the ground or the corner of the plow is gonna touch the ground or something. And so there are downsides to that. The reason I mount it six inches low though, is so that there's enough play left and right, enough pivot in this direction. You want it to contour a little bit to the road surface as you're going down the road. And so it needs to have some play like that. Now the Snow Bear uh, had plenty of play to start with. Both of them, by the way, needed to be about dropped about six inches for my purpose. Um, but it had some play to begin with. You can see they have some kind of, um, some kind of pivot surface here. It's like a little, Oh, it's kind of rounded on top. I know you really can't see it, but there we go. So there's something that you can kind of, the thing will pivot on a little bit. I know you're seeing all kinds of stuff is bent and broken. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So on the DK2 plow, I had to add that. It didn't have any way to pivot from the factory. So down here, you see two washers and between them, there's a, uh, I made kind of a rounded washer. I just took some I don't know if you can see that, but I took some quarter inch rod, approximately quarter inch rod, and bent it in a circle so that this plow would have a little bit of, of that pivot capability. But from the factory, you know, you bolt it together and it's, it's pretty rigid left to right and it's not going to contour to the road. So some pros and cons. Uh, so for the hitch mounting, the procedure that I use to determine how high it needs to be is basically I put a floor jack right under the mount and with it down, with the plow down like this. So most of the weight is off the suspension and run the floor jack up so that this is just being held at that height. Maybe pick a quarter inch up off of it or, or none, just so it's being held. Then you lift the plow so that it's uh, maybe two inches off the ground and you rock it left and right. And if it doesn't have much play going one way and it has lots of play going the other way, uh, then you have a mounting height issue because as the as an angled thing if it comes up the far end like this is going to go up as it goes down the far end is going to go down more and so the you want it to touch the ground when it's exactly level so it has a maximum play in both directions and that's that was very tricky to figure out it took me a year and some to really figure out how to do that right um, which was to do that jacking thing I was talking about and then put some spacers of equal width in these two gaps, that and then over there on the other side, so that I could see what was exactly level when it was just coming down to the surface of the, of the asphalt and do all that testing on nice flat asphalt or concrete. Okay, so now it's probably time to look at the ways that these two different plows have failed over time. Each one of them failed in a way that was essentially catastrophic. Like I think they both are at a point they need to be retired. Uh, again, I should say, even though this was one season, this was four seasons, that does not mean that this one is four times better than that one, or excuse me, that one, this one is four times better than that one, or that uh, this is clearly, the snow bear is clearly the one to get. I don't think that's necessarily true, but let me just, let's just go over each of the two plows and let you see some things that have broken, things that I had to fix, things that I could not fix, um, so you kind of know what is in store. And I'm going to start with the snow bear. Okay, so let's start with the big failures on the snow bear plow. The first big failure is right down here. So this is where the frame of the thing mounts up to the plow itself. And you can see right now, uh, you probably can't see, but this is, this is totally loose. <laughs> like this, the, like the frame is just pushing this along. It's not actually mounted to this pivot here. Um, and I've had to replace that pivot bolt a couple of times. Then obviously this rib busted off of its weld and also the, the mounting tab broke off of the frame piece here. 
So I'll show you what that's supposed to look like. The middle one is still in okay shape. So they have these two little tabs on either side of the rib, and then they have a pin that goes through between them that's supposed to pivot on. And you see this one's all bent back, the mounting point. This one, I guess this one's maybe in the best shape except for how the one tab is kind of bent out over here, but that's how it was supposed to work. Now, if you plow generally to the right, the right side is gonna be the one that takes all the abuse. If you, you know, plow evenly, sometimes left, sometimes right, or if you're plowing straight a lot, a lot of this abuse might not happen, but generally, particularly if you're plowing a road, you wanna be sending snow off to the right. And that's one of the things about these plows that I tend to plow fast on the last pass to throw the snow off of the road surface and over the bank. And so this right side got really abused. So that really leads us to the second big failure that I had, which is the blades bending. And if we look down this blade, you can see how absurdly bent this is. This, uh, this here is from the second rib in uh, pushing through because it's being bent back here so badly. This corner has also been bent back in addition to the whole plow being bent down the width, the length of it. This has been bent back. You can see the rib is all crumpled. Um, and that's just from this corner, you know, taking so much of the force because you're plowing to the right. So this rib is all messed up. And when this is no longer flat, when the bottom of the plow is no longer flat, you're really just touching in two points, probably this corner and the far corner or this corner in the middle or something like that, uh, and which makes for terrible plowing. So those were some of the big failures, but I'll show you a couple other things that went wrong. So one is the winch actuator. The winch itself worked fine and it lifts pretty hard, but the strap, the stock uh, webbing that it came with broke, I think at the end of the first season out of four. I think I made it most of the way through the first season. After that, I, have to, I happen to have a lot of this uh, like five eighths uh, webbing on hand. So I just use two lengths of it and tie it on there and wrap it around. And this repair with the, the two will last. Usually I'll catch it when one of them breaks and the tang on the other one. Sometimes I'll catch it because the plow flops on the ground and I can't pick it up. And that uh, will last me about half a season with this method. But I have a lot of this on hand, so it's free. Um, another major problem with the snow bear was that these, um, the trip springs just pop off constantly. And you can see, like you can try to use this hole, you can try to use this hole. I've drilled two more holes in order to take more and more slack out of this. And you can see also I had to stack up all these washers. Now looking at it, I'm having a hard time remembering exactly why I had to do that. But I think the threads end on this eye bolt uh, maybe was the deal. Um, anyway, for some reason I had to stack up all these washers to pull the hook back as far as I could or pull, pull the eye bolt back as far as I could. And still this comes off. Now when it comes off, is not being tripped, it's going the other way. It's when you push the snow up into a bank um, is where this the whole thing kind of bends back and these just fall off. And so I can't tell you how many times I've had to go back on the road to try to find one or both of these trip springs. And I even had one time, both of them came off and uh, I was trying to get it back to the house and the whole plow folded up underneath the truck and the truck was sitting up on top of the plow. I had to come get the tractor, and, like pick the truck up and back it up to get the plow to come out. It was, it was, a, it was a mess. Um, another failure is that as these things, as this bends back a little bit and this breaks and stuff, the whole angle of the plow changes. Um, and it wasn't really the ideal angle to begin with because you had to do this drop down thing. And so the plow shoes, you can't even have plow shoes or skis or whatever you call them um, on here. I just was using the, the mounting plate for them itself. And you see it's all, you know, graded away. Um, and so basically I couldn't use shoes on this at all uh, because this mounting plate was sticking down farther than the edge of the plow anyway. So you couldn't even add a shoe on there. So that was, uh, that was another major failure on this one. Um, the, there were some kind of little parking feet on here. They broke off like right away uh, within the first season, I think. Um, they were gone. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a good rundown of the, oh, let's do one, well, a couple other failures. Um, the whiskers break there. I don't know what you call these markers, whiskers. Um, you can see this one's busted off. But these ones lasted through several seasons, uh, a couple of seasons before any of them broke. We'll compare that to the DK2, which that was bad. But, um, and then you can see, I still have the stock, the, this, this, uh, this 
snow guard or the floppy deal on the top. This guard, um, this is the stock one. You see it's like, it's like six inches wide. Uh, this one had the same thing and it's a total waste. Like why even have one? Um, so I got this piece of belting and drilled holes in it in the right places. It doesn't go quite all the way to the end, but um, this helps a lot. And you really, if you're gonna do a road um, rather than a driveway, or especially if you ever plow really cold, uh, loose, fluffy snow, um, it's gonna be coming over like crazy. So you need to have, you need to use some kind of aftermarket deal. So I had to do that as well. And then I guess, okay, okay. One, one more thing is that the, these, these bolts, the carriage bolts, they're not plow bolts. They're, they're carriage bolts that hold these on, which is probably fine, but they break constantly, especially these two right at the, the, the break between the, the two greater blade sections. They just constantly break. Um, so that uh, is pretty annoying. I have like I, like, I carry a bag of this bolt and nut around in the truck um, because they break so much. So yeah, I think that's probably a pretty good, pretty good overview of all the things that have gone wrong uh, with the with the snow bear. Okay, so now let's look at the DK2 and the things that have failed with the DK2. Um, the first one is probably the most obvious and it's the biggest one and it's the reason I'll probably have to retire it. Is this blade is bending too, but it's bending in some ways worse. Um, this greater blade is almost straight up and down now and it's taking just so much force this way um, and it just, it can't, uh, it can't survive this much longer. So this, something about this needs to um, get fixed. And, and part of it is you can see there's a little bit of bend down the top. So the whole dang thing has a little bit of bend. At the bottom, there's tons of bend. And that's because back here, it's hard to tell, but this is all, all pretty bent. Um, and the greater blade sections, there are three of them instead of two. And these bolts are popping off all the time too, just like on the snow bear. Um, so that's just exacerbating the problem, but you can see this pretty thin plow material. It just, it just, you know, it's only tack welded in a couple of places and then the rib bent like that. Once it bends a lot, the rib is gonna bend um, so that it gets bent down. And if I keep plowing with it like this, it's just gonna bend more very quickly. So some other problems with the DK2, um, one of them is the, these, these wheels that are like very handy for rolling it around uh, when it's on the ground. But the things I've only had to do that once, which is just mounting the thing. Like I haven't dismounted it yet before they failed so badly. And the failure is that there's supposed to be a pin that goes through here and the factory pin, both of them fell out and were lost quickly. Then I put some other pins, I put bolts through here and something about that. Those went away pretty quickly. Then I got some nicer half inch pins and put them through there and those disappeared. I don't know what it is about this, but you know, uh, like a hitch pin with a, with a cotter pin through it or whatever it is, I don't know if they're, break, if they're breaking or what's going on, but they disappear. So these wheels are constantly trying to drag on the ground, which is not a terrible problem if you're going forward, but if you're going backward, um, it causes a lot of problems. So they're constantly flopping around. Both of them are, you can see that one over there, both of them are, are uh, toast. And frankly, I just need to take these off and then put them back on when it's time to park it. Um, so I will say for the DK2 plow, this mount seems a little more sturdy than the Snow Bear. Um, and that's part of why I selected this one. You can see though, it's already eating back into the mount because this is just wearing. This is just one season of wear and it's come back. Oh, sorry, there we go. Uh, it's come back 3 16 of an inch or so. Maybe, maybe, yeah, about 3 16 um, So that has been, uh, that's gonna fail over time. But this mount itself does actually look like it's built a little better. If we compare it to the Snow Bear, it's just a tab stuck out the end here. And then there's a little tab welded onto there. As opposed to on the DK2, it's this whole kind of, um, this whole like uh, bracket. Um, so that seems a little more skookum to me, but um, still it's gonna, it's gonna wear here. Like this needs to be filled with like a lot of material to brace this on their plows. Um, I did tighten down the uh, trip strings as much as I could. Well, no, I guess I could have gone even a little further, but these have not been popping off like on the snow bear. So that's good. Um, okay, uh, another problem with this plow is 
I don't know if it was the brand of nylock nuts they got or what, but they just fall off. And that includes the main, main <laughs> bolt um, fell off on me. Uh, that, 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 um, cause you can't have it ultra tight or it won't pivot. And so, you know, that's why you would use a nylock, uh, nut, but this whole thing, it just, it just fell out. And which means you're dragging the plow itself alongside like this on the chain <laughs> and you drag it to somewhere where you can safely get out and, and like remount it. And I had to grab there's a spare, that's one cool thing about the DK2, they do give you a spare of this pin down here. I assume it's a spare. And I was able to grab that and throw it in there and it bent it a little bit, but I could at least pick the plow up and get um, get home. Um, no, I would not do that on a public road. That was, that was at the end of a lot of private road that I could um, run back like that very slowly. So, okay, another problem with the DK2 is the hydraulic actuator. Now I like the hydraulic actuator because it has a chain and it's not a strap like on the snow bear that's going to constantly break. So that's good that it has a chain, but it's bad that the hydraulic actuator seals don't last very long. So in this case, the seal started failing, oh, two to three months in to the first season. And uh, I'll try to make like a time lapse for you of it coming down, but basically you pick it up and it comes down. And about if you're driving around, like if you gotta drive home from the end of the, the plowing um, with it hanging on the chain, about every 15 seconds, you probably ought to be picking it up or else this corner is gonna be bonking on the ground. Um, so that's just kind of annoying that it doesn't, like these seals just didn't last very long and it won't stay up very well. Another thing about the DK2 is that they, they foresaw, so this, so, okay, so take a look at this, this funny turnbuckle and chain system I have on here. So this is to keep the lateral torque from being transmitted back to this thing. So I'm pulling it back on both sides to keep it kind of steady. Um, Snowbear didn't have a solution for that, so I, I set up this chain situation on the Snowbear, and then I moved it to this because DK2 has these cool brackets that are supposed to help with this. So it goes like this, it has kind of a turnbuckle-like thing, and it goes back to your hitch mount. Now, problem is my hitch mount is clear up here. So to get all the way up here, first I can't use this outer bolt hole because the, um, the, the tow hook is there. And even on this one, the tow hook is in the way, but let's say I drilled another hole here and ran it up like so. One problem is it's not long enough because the drop extension adds some length. And then also I just, it's, there's so much angle, you can't really see this, but it's at a ridiculous angle. Like it's not gonna do a good job. And probably gonna break, um, but it's at a weird angle to be able to get up there. So unfortunately I couldn't use these. They're a clever idea. And if you were mounting it, if you're mounting the, the regular you know, hitch um, unit right straight into your receiver at that height, um, it would be clever, except of course for the issue of if you have tow hooks, you know, you gotta either be way on the inside where it doesn't do as good of a job or you're out here and the, the tow hooks are in the way. So, okay, one other thing about the DK2 is that the plow whiskers bust off constantly. They're made out of a different kind of plastic. I don't know what it, this actually, it feels like um, HCPE. Um, this, I should know my plastics better. It feels like a, like a nylon or something, but it it's just bendier and it, and it fits onto the stud better. These ones bust off just like you see. They break off like that. You hit a few bumps and the whole thing goes flopping back and forth and then it snaps. It usually stays attached. Sometimes you gotta go looking for it on the road. Sometimes it stays attached. Um, but basically as soon as these, these flop around and they go like this, okay, and that is all broken. And if it's colder, it snaps faster. That's the failure point. And so I have remounted each of these a whole bunch of times. So obviously like when it gets like this, I just cut the bottom off, cut this off, it gets an inch shorter and I remount it. But that's been happening constantly. Um, one other little problem with the DK2, this is like a really minor problem, but um, they didn't send those bolts. Like I, I, you know, I found all the other fasteners, but uh, I was just missing two of these top bolts. So I didn't put them in, it didn't really matter. I figured I was gonna replace this, you know, within or at the end of the first season, and then I had only lasted the first season. Um, they, I do like, they, they, they sent it with this uh, connection, 
which is nice. They it was a, like a giant Anderson connection on the snow bear, and I replaced that once when the plow fell off and broke it, and then again when my replacement didn't work very well. I ended up replacing it just with another one of these big Anderson style things. Um, by the way, when you if you get a snow bear plow, uh, you ought to put split loom on it as soon as you can because the UV is going to kill these these wires that come out of here. You can see, especially if, I mean if you're storing it outside in the in the summer. It's just going to get wrecked. This was red, <laughs> you know, and, and this get got pretty eaten. So I'd get the split loom on there as soon as you can. The DK2, um, I don't know how it's going to last. I don't like how much bin there is coming out of here, but they did use a cable gland, which is nice. And uh, this is a second layer of insulation. So hopefully, you know, as it gets exposed to UV, it'll stay um, pliable and won't crack and stuff. I did throw split loom, though, on the other end of it um, just to protect that on the truck end. Okay, so I think that's a fairly good overview of what the issues are with these two plows. Um, the big things that I feel on both of them is they both will bend. If you're plowing to the right, mostly, that right side is probably going to get bent. Um, and that's just, these are light duty plows. They are meant for environments, probably not like mine, probably like a nice manicured couple hundred feet of paved driveway that you plow at five miles an hour. If you are like me and you know that if you plow the first time in the winter, you push the snow out like this really slow and then you go slow again, you push it out like this and then you push it out like this and you push it out like this. Pretty soon you have this narrow track that a vehicle can barely get through. And so we know where we have a little more snowfall, we got to eject that snow from the, the road surface. So that means the last pass, you maybe do one pass to scoot it out to the edge and then you do another pass to throw it over the bank or over the drift. And, uh, if you hit anything, if there are any little bumps in the road, drainage cutouts, washboard, a little rock poking up, and you touch that, you're going to start bending these plows. And I, I thought that I was a lot kinder to the DK2 than I was to the Snow Bear, and I just had one season until it started to bend like this, and it's just going to keep bending, I think, if I keep plowing like that. Um, also, the you know, the greater blades easily the bolts easily snap off they're gonna that, so that weakens the whole thing in terms of the bending and on this one it actually bent primarily at a gap in the greater blade because it didn't have support there there are also of course major issues long-term issues about the way that the plow itself mounts up to the frame on those three pivot pins the things that hold those pins can break this the dk2 did look better in that regard than the snow bear but the snow bear they are destroyed and it would take a lot of fabricating and and um, fixing to make it work really well again. So, uh, and then the actuator thing, the if you're willing to replace the strap every couple of months, uh, the winch actuator is good. If you're willing to constantly pick it up, um, then the, the hydraulic actuator is probably a little better, but you gotta really, I mean, if you're gonna drive anywhere with this, first, if it's on a hitch mount, you should consider taking it off if you ever wanna go anywhere off your property in the truck, in my opinion, because it hangs so far out there and it flops around so much, it makes the steering pretty weird. Like it's, I'm sure in their manual, it says you got to take them off if you go on the highway or something. Um, just cause it's, I mean, it's, it's four feet in front of the truck. So five and a half feet in front of the axle or more. Um, so yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not, that's a, that's kind of a funky situation to drive down the road, but you got to put the safety chain on them because if it's this type of actuator, it's just going to, uh, over time, if once those seals have failed, which I think they probably will, if it's that type of actuator, that strap could break at any minute. And so on either of them, you got to have a place to mount that safety chain, pick it all the way up and then put the safety chain on. And I'll tell you what, if you have the hydraulic actuator and it's starting, it has leaky seals and you want to put the safety chain on, you got to be quick. You got to pick it up and then hop out of the truck and go hook up the chain which means the first thing you need to do is set the chain nearly where it needs to go. Then go back to the truck, pick it up, run out, get the chain on there before it comes down one more link. Because uh, you need to pick it up every link you can or else that corner is going to be bonking on the ground everywhere you go. Oh, in fact, that reminds me, you also need to tip it straight. Um, and even then, you'll have some corner bonking. But it, So I take it back. You can't, you can't just drive around with it on the safety chain at an angle. You really need to straighten it out. All right, I think that's everything there is to know about these plows. Honestly, uh, you know, I haven't contacted either of these companies to let them know about this. I, maybe I'll send them this video or something, but um, I, haven't, I haven't talked to them about uh, any of the issues I've experienced or how they could make these plows better. I have 
uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of information about how they could get better uh, at this point. But I haven't talked to either of them, so I can't tell you anything about warranty support. For, uh, honestly, I just assume that um, given my application, if I contacted them, they'd say, oh, well, did it ever go over two and a half miles an hour? Oh, did it ever plow on dirt? Oh, did it ever, did you use it without the shoes ever? You know, did you add your own fasteners in certain places or, you know, things like that and, and the warranty was gonna be immediately void. But I, I, I didn't find that out. I just kind of assumed that. So, um, so your mileage uh, may vary on getting warranty support. I can't really speak to that in the review. So conclusion, uh, which one of these two is better? Um, I don't know. Uh, you got to decide. You got to think about which of these failures you'd rather deal with. Um, I, I couldn't tell you that one of these is definitely better. The DK2 looked better built. The Snow Bear lasted a little bit longer. I had, I did go through more failures with the snow bear before I retired it, but I know what's happened. I know what's coming on the DK2. I know this is going to bend back so badly. I won't be able to plow anything. And already it's just scraping at the corners, which is pretty useless. So, um, so yeah, which one's better? I don't know. Uh, you got, you got to make a decision. So I hope that's a little bit helpful making a call about what kind of, what kind of plow you're going to pick. Uh, good luck. <laughs>